As China sets its sights on the moon, the United States has something more distant on its mind, Mars. The space agency NASA continues to press ahead with its plans to send humans to the red planet in the next two decades. And just this week, the U.S. Congress voted to give NASA billions of dollars in funding to keep it on that track. CCTV's Sean Caleb spoke exclusively with the agency's administrator right here in Washington. First of all, it's been a great week for NASA, and I have to go all the way back to last week uh, because it's been a great seven-day period of time, beginning uh, with the announcement by the administration that the president had agreed that we should extend the life of the International Space Station to 2004. And we 2024. went 2024. 2024, I'm sorry. And we went right from that uh, decision by the president into two days of international forum one, the first at the, at the uh, State Department, the first ever International Space uh, Exploration Forum, where there were representatives from 35 nations around the world um, to talk about space exploration. And we were all just excited when, to find out that how excited they were that the United States was going to lead again in uh, prolonging the life of the International Space Station. And then to roll into this week with the budget coming out, um, we got almost everything the president had asked for in the budget in terms of the top line. So it has been a great week. I want to go over a couple things real quickly. $3.1 billion for the Mars mission, $1.2 billion for work on o Orion. What is that going to mean to NASA and what is that going to mean to space exploration? Well, it means uh, great things for the, for the world, actually. For NASA, it means that we will continue to be the world's leader in space exploration. It gives us an opportunity to continue to, to um, kind of shepherd all of our partner nations as we seek to learn more about um, humanity, first of all, but also more about uh, the, the questions we ask, you know, those, those really big questions about where did it all come from, uh, how did we get here, is there life elsewhere in the universe, and uh, so it, the money gives us the opportunity to continue to expand our quest for knowledge about this world in which we live. Let's talk about the commercial side of this, because there's almost $700 million for commercial entities. Mm -hmm. How will they play in, because you've been very clear about the fact you don't, you're not a big fan of the fact paying $70 million per person, <laughs> 60 to $70 million, yeah. to go up to the International Space Station. How close are, is, is the United States to tapping into that commercial aspect? We are into the commercial aspect now for cargo. I, I you know, I'm very proud to say that effective now, um, we have two American companies, Orbital Sciences, from right here in the D.C. area, and SpaceX out of Hawthorne, California, that now carry cargo to the International Space Station, not only for NASA, but in the case of SpaceX, they now are carrying satellites to geosynchronous orbit for, uh, for private entities and soon for other countries. So we're helping to bring the launch market back to American shores where we think it should be. The big thing, though, is commercial crew, and that's what you were talking about. And it's, we're within four years of having the capability to once again um, launch American astronauts and our partner astronauts from American soil, and that's really exciting. What kind of frustration do you have personally knowing that there's been this void from the U.S. being able to send people up into space? I, I would, if I can push back a little bit, um, there has not been a void of, of American involvement in exploration and human spaceflight. Um, you know, there are a lot of different ways. We will always, uh, till the end of time from here on out, we are going to be united with other nations in exploring. And sometimes we will use the spacecraft of, uh, most times we'll use our own spacecraft, but there may be times that we want to use another spacecraft because it, it's, it, it better fits the mission or whatever it is. And that's what we're really trying to do. We're trying to, to bring nations together such that they realize that um, you know, we should have multiple ways to get to low Earth orbit, multiple ways eventually even to get to deep space. But right now, the only nation that has the capability of, of leading that type of effort is the United States, and, and we're very proud to have that challenge. So, uh, so I, I think it's been good. We've been on the International Space Station uh, without interruption. I have, a, I have three granddaughters. One is seven, one's 11, one's 13. The 13-year-old doesn't know what a day is like doesn't know what a second of her life is like for there not to be an American astronaut orbiting Earth on the International Space Station. And that's, that's a big deal. That's a great time code, too, it to is. have, have it your is. life. I want to ask you a couple of things. I read this quote in an uh, Asian Times newspaper. 
Tell me if you think this is fair. Quote here, not surprisingly, a key voice in opposing NASA China restrictions is NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden, who has been increasingly forthright in his attempts to get Congress to lift those restrictions. True? And if so, why? I am a believer in, I'm an internationalist, let me put it that way. I, I will tell people the U.S. and China work together today in the space program, and, and we do that uh, with the, blessing is not a good word, uh, we do that with the full knowledge and I hope confidence of the U.S. Congress because we have two areas in which we are working diligently with the Chinese and they are both in the area of earth science. One is in the area of geodetics, help, trying to understand earthquakes, their origin. You can't, you know, being able to predict them would be great. And the second area is in glacial characterization in the Himalayan mountain region where we are working uh, collaboratively with China and eight other Himalayan nations. So we, we continue to work collaboratively in partnership with China in the area of, of, of Earth observations and Earth science. Recently, French Space Agency said they could see a time, perhaps within the next three years, that China could be involved with the International Space Station. I read a quote from you that you're not nearly that optimistic. The International Space Station is exactly what it says, and believe it or not, this may come as news to people, China is already uh, active on the International Space Station in that they are a partner there is an investigative team on the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, which is an absolutely incredible, it is a basic physics experiment that's headed up by Dr. Sam Ting, uh, who is, I am convinced that he is going to see at least a Nobel Prize come from the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer that is currently resident on the, inter on the International Space Station. And one of the investigative teams is a team that is made up of scientists from China, and scientists from Taiwan as one team uh, that speaks volumes. Great. Yeah. Well, we could talk more, but I know you have to I catch wish we could, and hopefully we'll get, we have an opportunity to get together again. Okay. General, thank you very much. Thank I you very much. Thank you. Time. Thanks so Best very much. Best of luck. This was great. Well, we want to dig a bit deeper into China's role, not only in real life, but also in the movies. Oscar nominee Gravity is all about space and what happens when something goes wrong. Without giving too much of the plot away, Chinese technology plays a big role late in that movie. We also talked to China's Vice President of Industry and Information Technology about what he sees as China's role in space and whether it should work more closely with the United States. China is open-minded in working with other countries in the space program. Hopefully other countries could have the same attitude because space resources is owned by all human beings. Joining me now with more on all of this is CCTV correspondent Sean Calebs. Sean, it seems like uh, the U.S. Congress is not too keen on a meaningful relationship between the United States and China. What's the background to this? I mean, who would have known that there is legislation that prevents this cooperation? Yeah, it's, it's, it's worth pointing out that NASA is the only U.S. government entity that by law is prohibited from sharing information with China. It's a law that was drafted by Virginia Senator uh, Wolf. Wolf has announced he's not going to run for re-election. We heard what uh, Charlie Bolden had to say. He views himself as an internationalist. Uh, he's flown in space four times, Bolden has. Uh, clearly, he's somebody that perhaps could convince Congress to maybe get a foot in the door and let's see what China is doing. Clearly, China's space program is ascending. One could argue that Russia's program is, is not. And the United States is certainly trying to, you know, it, it would argue that's clearly the leader in space exploration right now, but to reassert itself as a dominant number one. So it's an exciting time for space exploration. That was a great interview with Bolden there. Uh, but the Chinese and the Americans have different priorities when it comes to space exploration, don't they? Well, yeah, you know, China was the third nation to have a soft landing on the moon with its rover. It, it's made it clear it would like to, to take a manned uh, expedition to the moon sometime in the near future. We heard about the space station China wants to build. It's very similar to what the Mir, the former Soviet Union, had. It's not going to be the gigantic, expansive uh, international space station. The United States is leaving, for lack of a better word, uh, the, the manned flights from the United States. They hope to have those, as you heard Bolden say, within four years to the International Space Station. They want private entities, SpaceX, some of those other companies, to take the lead in that. The United States is looking 
much further. They're looking to Mars and beyond. And recently they announced with this new budget deal, they have money for the uh, SLS, the Space Launch System, and that would rival the Saturn V rocket. For anybody who knows anything about space, that's the giant rocket during the Apollo era that sent the rockets to the moon. They need something massive like that. It can not only take men, women, uh, people to Mars and beyond, but it can also take cargo and other expeditions out there. So it's a very exciting time. Sure. Thanks for joining us.